Hello everyone, I'm Lana Carlson and I'm interviewing here at Ashley Metro today. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Perfect, and Ashley, what's your Instagram? Hey, ask her what's your Instagram. Ashley, tell us what is your Instagram. <laughs> My Instagram is Ashley fucking Metro. So that's Ashley fucking Metro. A S H L E Y S E C K I N G M E T R O. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Tell us. I'm 20 years old. 20 years old and <laughs> actually becoming a full-time artist. And I think you're planning on having an exhibition for your 21 years old birthday, yeah. right? Around that time. Yeah. <laughs> Which I feel is really, really great to do yeah, such a thing. Well, Ashley, um, let's talk a little bit about art. When because you are so young, when did you decide to become a full, full-time artist when you felt that need or understanding that you were actually an artist? I was... So, I, I kind of started my journey just from um, being really involved with a lot of diff- other people's careers out in Austin. So this is where I was born and raised. And growing up, like, I, I hate to admit it, but but I also really don't care. But I used to run around with a lot of my friends and go to a lot of the, the art shows and galleries out here. Um, one in particular was the Cherry Cola Dog. I've been there before they closed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. that was kind of what sort of essentially raised me in a <sighs> weird sort of way. And I think how old were you at the time? I was like 17. I was not supposed to be there at all. <laughs> we were, they, and a lot of those people like, kind of knew we were a little bit younger, but you know, we were always very respectful, and we would come in, and you know, we were just there to kind of appreciate the art. And yeah, was, I think they knew your purpose was. Yeah. It was, you know. To get inspired. And mm-hmm. I think, I, and then I kind of started getting involved with a lot of my friends on different uh, events, that they were throwing for, you know, because I have a lot of friends that are musicians, mm-hmm. so I would often kind of try to connect different things for, to like, to help, like, events happen, so for, mm-hmm. when my friend Matthew started Self-Loathing Factory, he reached out to me, and he, he basically was like, hey, I want you to do some of the murals for it, because we had done a shoot together, where I had painted a background, I painted on a, per- on, on a person, that was the first time I realized that this is something that I could do on a large scale mm-hmm. um, that really just got my adrenaline rush mm-hmm. that I've been looking for with so many different um, things that I kind of experimented with. And I think I've always sort of had that in me ever since I was, ever since I was really young when I would obsessively paint. And so he basically, when he was throwing these events, he would call me up and be like, oh, I'm going to bring over a huge roll of photo paper. And if you know anything about photo paper, it's like this. Yeah, it's the paper. Like, it's, like, it's, the, <laughs> it's, it's like a giant it's roll a of paper. Roll. Yeah. Like probably about this size, but down to the ground, like a little bit bigger maybe. And he would, I would just fill up a wall of my apartment and I would paint these huge murals on it and give it them to him for these uh, events. And, you know, it, it was kind of, that was kind of the start of it. Mm-hmm. And I just kept wanting to do more and do bigger stuff. And um, I guess when I finally decided that I wanted to um, become an artist, I was working at a hotel in Austin. Um, and I had been um, enrolled in ACC classes for my second year, so mm-hmm. my first semester, and I just kind of stepped back and I just kind of thought about what I wanted, and I was kind of at, in this time where I would go back and forth to Los Angeles a lot, and I had a friend out there who is a famous porn star, that you <laughs> have, I, who I, I uh, and. Basically, this all happened within a day. I know this is like a long rambling story, but it's, it has a point. So, basically, she hit me up and she was like, "Hey, Ashley, do you um, do you want to come and style me for the Pornhub Awards?" 
I, and I was like, okay, let's do it. And I kept up with her, and I was like, listen, this is. It. I came up with the idea for what she was gonna wear. I sketched out all these different ideas for like the patterns and everything. And I quit my. I, I quit my all my school. I dropped all my classes. Um, I quit my job. And like, if I basically like a few days later right before I was about to leave. This is right after I turned 20, mm -hmm. uh, so about a year ago. Um, I uh, crashed my car and totaled it. It wasn't my fault, it was, some, it was another guy who had crashed into it, and my life has been not been the same ever since. But it also wow. kind of was, just forced me to like really prioritize what's important to me in my life. Was it a bad crash? Or? No. It was okay. Very you were not injured. No. Okay. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. That happens. But have some. I, I happened went with some of our artistic trees. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I just lost every. Like, I didn't lose. I mean, I don't think I lost anything necessarily. I just, you know, I, I stopped. I, I stopped my lease at my apartment. I, you know, moved in with my friend, <laughs> and basically slept on her couch in Los Angeles. And I, I don't know, like I, I turned 20, which was a big deal to me at the time. Like that was, you know, I, I've always kind of, I never really thought that I, I would get to that age in a weird sort of way. I always kind of, I just was living in my teens for so long. Mm -hmm. And that it kind I kind of, it kind of <laughs> hit me and I was like, you know, I need to get my shit together and I really need to prioritize, start prioritizing my career because what I want to do is completely is so far out of range for most people my age, and it takes a long time to really cultivate that. So I was like, you know, I might as well start now because I think it's a very strong decision on your part. It, it is very adult, so <laughs> you did you did have different with some sort of realization and understanding that oh my god, I have to grow up, um, and it's wonderful. I I always respect when people from young age they make strong decisions and they decide have her, they have mission, they have the idea and they go for execution of the idea. I, I've been myself <laughs> in the same shoes, I've been always very entrepreneurial and kind of uh, decisive from 14 years old. I was already like making decisions like you did. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, the style that you you have a really specific style. Yes, we can recognize a little bit of Keith Haring or a little bit of Basquiat. Mm -hmm. I can t I can feel the inspiration, but it is very unique. It's def different from all of them. At the same time, maybe you will tell us a little bit about a couple of pieces and how you got inspired and um, the ideas. So for me, with a lot of my work, I think uh, I think of it almost like mental maps. Mm -hmm. So I kind of um, start with like a concept or an idea, and I really let myself get enthralled in it, and kind of um, kind of develop like a theme in my head, and I sort of create a story mm -hmm. from it. So this one's like one of the best <laughs> explanations. <laughs> for this one. But there's a lot going on, and you can definitely follow, you know. The Oh yeah, the action. Mm -hmm. I mean, with this particular one, there's a. Um, it's both a conceptual story, and then there's a um, actual uh, structured story within. So it's both kind of abstract yet also um, very literal. So yeah, the other like shot and wider shot. Basically, the. Um, just the frame mm -hmm. tells, you like, you know. Yeah, you can show. So, with this particular one, I like to show this one um, as, like, an example because I think it's the best, like, ID, the best way to kind of um, explain a lot of my work. So, in the frames that you see here, there is, um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of this is a story of kind of what was going on with COVID at the time when I first started this. So this is where, like, right after. I had got gotten back from California, and I just was sort of, I just felt like I was stuck in this new world. I felt like I had just transported into a whole other reality that was just <laughs> complete. It, 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 it felt <laughs> surreal, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like I slipped into a different reality, mm -hmm. and I feel like this, you know, and I kind of 
tell the story of kind of like all these different things that were happening during COVID, sort of the mm-hmm. feeling of isolation mm-hmm. and kind of um, the how time stops and how everything just felt like it was, you know, we almost were like hanging in this new, frozen, kind of frozen in time, literally. And, um, you know, down here, I, I, re- I talk a lot about um, sort of, kind of a lot of it, a lot of the bottom part of it is a critique on kind of modern culture and kind of consumerism and how that, you know, how consumerism is sort of used to be able to kind of control us to a certain extent. Um, And then going into this right side, this um, kind of talks about like the pharmaceutical industry Mm -hmm. and then kind of what about this calendar? (laughs) Oh yeah, I I, I started that, like I started doing it every day and it got kind of, it went overboard and I was like, you know, I don't fucking know how long I've been quarantined for. Because it's not going to end, it's just perpetual. Um, But yeah, they, Mm -hmm. you know, each part, and then I kind of think of the middle as like sort of just me taking all of the concepts that I sort of organized on the outside of the frame and kind of bring it into um, kind of like a different story. Mm-hmm. I could go into more depth, uh, but no, it's fine. It's cool. Uh, I feel like I just wanted for our listeners to understand a little, like how your mind is uh, working and why you choose certain style. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of it is just me trying to kind of organize my thoughts on <laughs> something. <laughs> it totally makes <laughs> sense. Okay, um, Ashley, tell us uh, also about this piece that you call abstract ideology. It's really cool, but I do want to understand the philosophical aspect of it. Uh, so I put like ab- the phrase abstract ide- ideology in my work, not only because it's kind of like a, a brand that I ca- uh, name that I identify with myself, uh, alongside with Metro, which is actually my last name. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do like I actually <laughs> legally <laughs> my last <laughs> name that I was born yes. with. You um, change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but abstract ideology basically uh, is just supposed to reference sort of how, I, I guess for me, it's kind of a way for me to kind of call out to people and say, you know, it, um, it's important to have a outlook that isn't so black and white, you know, mm-hmm. and so, you know, even though a lot of my work is black and white mm-hmm. and it feels very, um, you know, a lot of it feels kind of stark and almost very intense. Like, I think it's important for people to kind of open their mind up and really look for, you know, the answers within themselves or within art or just within all of, you know, any sort of conceptual way. I think right now we're in a time of great, um, stress and kind of like disillusionment and I think it's really important for people to just um, kind of try to open themselves up to be able mm-hmm. to come back together. Uh, abstract ideology also you know has the um, it's AI mm-hmm. so I, I also kind of like to use that as like a reference to artificial intelligence meaning um, you know it's like we we have like an abstract mindset but um, there's always part of ourselves that uh, there's always going to be part of ourselves that kind of fit into uh, certain certain molds, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, sounds or rhythms. <laughs> sounds great. Really, sounds great. Like well, what we were talking about before. Ashley, I we obviously were talking already about uh, coronavirus and COVID and art in, in isolation, but uh, maybe you will tell us a couple. Uh, words about how you get inspired right now, what keeps you going, and how you how you make yourself go in and create. I think, I think for me, um, something that uh, what really helps me stay inspired is kind of just like learning as much as I can about other artists, learning as m- much as I can about kind of you know being allowing myself to really experience what's happening in the world and kind of not, you know, like not allowing myself to kind of shut down and sort of, you know, keep out all of these different 
uncomfortable things are coming up to, to light right now, but just kind of facing them and allowing that to kind of manifest itself into my uh, artwork. Uh, the way I like to think of it, the way that I stay inspired is by, you know, sort of engaging the things that are inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. So as long as I'm kind of going out of my way to really, um, you know, uh, like learn and grow not only within myself but you know uh, with my work I think you know I, the, it, it's hard not to be inspired yeah it's <laughs> a beautiful I totally appreciate it it's a beautiful way I feel like you don't waste your time during pandemic people freak out people uh, go crazy do that and you just you learn and you stay focused it's a beautiful way of doing things I definitely uh, I feel like I'm on the same page I don't know how much I've learned, but I do try to learn every day. <laughs> yeah, I, but it's, sometimes it's hard because it's mm -hmm. hard to really find things. Some, you know, in certain certain days for me in particular that I can kind of use to kind of, you know, um, kind of put into my next piece. Sometimes it takes me a while of just like sort of um, not necessarily even collecting re information, but just. It, it takes like me some time to just kind of collect information in my mind and kind of feelings and experiences for me to kind of start a new painting, of course, of course. which it's hard mm -hmm. to explain. It's like, you know, I feel like I kind of know subconsciously when I'm ready to just kind of let it all out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I kind of need to like build up some... A little more. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, Ashley, I want to say thank you so much for this beautiful conversation and a uh, great time. Thank you for introducing yourself. I'm looking forward to introduce you to our uh, followers and collectors and art lovers. This young, talented uh, superstar of Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited, honestly. Can't wait to, to show. This is, 